Good afternoon. As you most, most of you know, I'm the principal at Owensboro High School. My name is Anita Burnett, and it's an honor and a privilege to serve as your principal. To start the year, each year, we usually go through the student agenda book. All of us do much better if we know what's expected of us, adults included. So we take this time every year to go through the agenda book to just talk about those expectations. And it really helps if you know what's expected of you and then we normally live up to those expectations. Keep in mind that we are here to work with you. Our jobs, the adults here, our jobs is to work with the students at Owensboro High School. We want what's best for you and we're gonna do everything we can to support you but we do have high expectations for our students and we won't apologize for that. As I tell everyone across the state, when I go to meetings and conferences and things like that, the students at Owensboro High School are the best. If you want or you do not want or your parents don't want you photographed, um, any honor rolls, things like that, that go in the newspaper or with the media, if they don't want you involved in that, they've got to let me know that in the next couple of weeks. So please, if there's a reason that you can't be photographed, uh, your picture in the newspaper, um, put in the newspaper for honor roll, any of those kinds of things, you need to let me know in writing as soon as possible. There are some student fees that you need to be aware of. There are student fees, they're $80 a year. If you're on free and reduced lunch, those are normally waived. Uh, but there's a laptop fee, it's a $50 user fee, and that is not waived. So um, if you are wanting to take your laptop home with you every night, um, then you would have to pay that fee first. Um, ID badges, everyone has the opportunity to get a free ID badge when they start as a freshman at Owensboro High School. And I hope all of you, or most of you, have taken advantage of that opportunity. You are required to have your ID badge on you at all times. Um, in the beginning of the year especially, it's crucial because we don't know everyone's names yet. We have new students here from different school districts. Some people have moved in. Some are just driving in from the county. And of course, we have our freshmen. So please, please keep your ID badge on you and you will need it to get in line at lunch. Uh, but it's just very, very important that you have that on you at all times. You can be assigned a locker. Uh, it's not required, but you may request to have a locker. And we're gonna try our best not to have to have locker partners this year. Um, we'll just have to see how that goes. But please, please listen carefully to me. What contents or the contents in your locker is yours? So please do not give out your combination. Please don't allow other people to put, uh, put things in your locker because that content, whatever's in that locker, belongs to you. So if somebody was to put something illegal in your locker, then you would be in trouble because it's in your locker. Our school day starts at 825 and ends at 320. Once you leave, once you get on campus in the morning, you are not allowed to leave without permission from a principal. And that principal is not going to give you permission without talking to a parent. But you are not allowed to leave once you get on the school grounds. For example, your parent drops you off at school and you decide that you want to walk down to McDonald's to get breakfast with a friend. If your mom or dad or grandmother or grandfather dropped you at school and you were on school grounds and then you choose to leave, then that is considered skipping. Um, so once you arrive, you must stay. When you arrive in the morning, you need to arrive at the north entrance in the back. Um, you can go to the cafeteria, the second tier of the gym, and we do have some students that will check out of the cafeteria to go to the media center to work on their homework. And we will work with you and help you with those things. But once you start your morning, you should start in the north entrance, start in the cafeteria in that area, and then at 8.15 a bell will ring to release everyone to go 
anywhere in the building that they need to go to prepare for their first block. If there's a change of address at your home uh, or a change of a phone number, please let our attendance secretary, Mrs. Boone, know so she can get that changed in Infinite Campus for us. It's imperative that we have accurate information for you, your address, your phone number, that kind of thing in case there's an emergency. In our cafeteria, we do have some expectations. You must have your ID badge to get in line. Um, if you've forgotten your ID badge, you can eat lunch. It's just later, um, later in the lunch shift. Uh, we expect uh, all of our students to observe good dining habits, and we expect you to clean up after yourselves. Our cafeteria ladies serve over 1,150 students, and they could serve 150 adults each day. That's a lot of people. So please pick up after yourself, just like you would do at home. There, we do have some very specific rules about tobacco. Um, it is against school policy and actually against federal and state statute to have tobacco on certain, in certain locations, especially if federal dollars have been used to build that entity. So you cannot have tobacco at school. Um, and uh, so just if you smoke, and I really hope you don't, but if you do smoke, you need to leave your cigarettes at home. Uh, because that is against school policy, along with using tobacco. So please, please, first, if you are smoking, please stop. It's so unhealthy. But if you do smoke, do not bring your cigarettes to school. You may have your cell phones. Uh, I know many of you are, seem to be addicted to those, but you may have your cell phones with you and out, and you can use them until it's time, 825, bell rings. You may use your cell phone in the cafeteria, not in the hallway on the way to the cafeteria and not in the hallway on the way back from the cafeteria, uh, only in the cafeteria. And then, of course, you can use your cell phone after school is out at 320. The same rules go for iPods, any of those devices. Uh, so please read your uh, student agenda book on page 6. If you choose to use your cell phone um, when you're not supposed to be using it, then there are some consequences for that as well. Uh, and most of that involves, in the beginning, working with your parents. Uh, if you lose your cell phone during the day, if a teacher takes it because you have it out inappropriately, they're going to bring it to the office. And then one of us will meet with your parents to give them the phone back. We won't be giving you the phone back, so please don't ask will be giving that phone back to your parents. If you have a camera phone, and most phones today do have cameras in them that you can use, be careful. Um, it's probably pretty attractive to think, oh, this is funny, I'll video it, or I'll take pictures, and then I'll post those on Facebook or YouTube. You need to be very, very careful doing that. If it's something inappropriate and it's happening at school, please do not do that because then you're the one that's going to be in trouble. So don't do that. I know sometimes it's really tempting, but please be careful. If you have to come to school after we've already begun classes in the day, you need to come and check in through the office. Uh, we will give you an admittance slip to class. If you need to check out during the day, and I'm going to encourage you not to do that because when you miss class, it really hurts your grades. But if something happens and you can't get a doctor's appointment before school or after school and you have to check out to go to the doctor, the dentist, orthodontist, etc., then um, if you're a driver and you're going to drive yourself, your parents need to call school 24 hours in advance, not the day of. 24 hours in advance because we may not have time to take their calls, may not be in our offices to take their calls, so 24 hours in advance. If you are not a student driver, then your, child, then your parent will have to come and check you out of school. Internet contract. You have an internet contract on file with the school district. 
And that internet contract gives you the right to use some of the technology tools the district owns, such as your laptop. Um, it also gives you the right to, to use some of the tools here at school. Um, you're going to access the internet here at school. Be careful not to abuse that privilege. If you do things that are, very, are inappropriate with those tools, then you'll probably lose that privilege. Um, also, some of the things, and kids just think they're playing jokes, become illegal pretty fast. So please, please be careful with what you do on the internet. There's a couple of things that will cause you to be removed from Owensboro High School. That means you've lost the privilege of being here. Most things we can work through. Um, we may have a bump in the road and we may have a consequence, but it's going to be okay. But there's a few things that won't be. And one is bullying. Please listen to me. If you choose to harass or bully other students, then the chances of you being here are very slim. And freshmen, I need you to pay very close attention to this because we usually have most of the problems with bullying in our freshman class. We will not tolerate it here. In the beginning, we may try to explain to you what you're doing, and we might give you a warning. But after one warning, we will press charges and I will recommend that you go to school somewhere else. We are not going to tolerate bullying here. If you're going to be a part of Owensboro High School and be involved in our activities such as the arts, athletics, all of our clubs, anything where you would represent us on the stage, um, on the playing field, on the basketball court, if you're going to represent us in any way and in any capacity, then we're going to hold you to a higher standard. And again, we won't apologize for that. We have the best students in Owensboro High School, and we really want the best students representing us. So there's, there's a thing called code of ethics. If you do anything to embarrass our school, and you're, if you're involved in one of those extracurriculars that we just mentioned, then you could and probably will lose your privilege of being a part of that. We, again, we have the best students at Owensboro High School and we only want the best representing us. So please, please take care of the privileges and opportunities that will be offered to you. On page 10, there's a policy on plagiarism and cheating. It's never okay to cheat and you know that deep down. Plagiarize is one of the things that we try to make sure you understand what it is first and then what to do to make sure that you don't do it. Because this is one of the things that when you start college, if you plagiarize in a paper or you, they find you cheating in any way, they'll send you home. You'll lose, lose your privilege of being there very quickly. So we spend quite a bit of time teaching you how to not do that. For example, if you're writing a paper and you use someone else's idea, then you have to give them credit for it. And your teachers will teach you how to do that. But if you use someone's idea and you don't give them credit for it, that is plagiarism. So it's very important that you learn that lesson now while you're here with us. Be sure to read that policy carefully because you will get a zero if you cheat on a paper or you plagiarize. 99% of our students follow all the rules. 99% of our students rarely, if ever, get in trouble. But a few do. So you kind of need to know the hierarchy, depending on the action, what might happen. Usually in the beginning, you'll, we'll have a, a conference with you then we may have a conference with your parents. Then we may look at some time in our in-house suspension. Then we might look at out-of-school out of suspension. But if we've gone that whole route, then we're probably going to look at placing you at, all, at an alternative school. Don't lose your privilege of being here. We want you here. You're a part of something very special. 
when you can say that you're an Owensboro High School graduate. So let's take care of that opportunity. Expulsions usually happen if someone has been involved in some kind of, of a drug situation. They brought marijuana to school, they brought some prescription drugs to school. We've had very few expulsions in my last 11 years as principal. Um, but when we've had those, it's all been tied back to those kinds of things. Don't lose your opportunities. They're too precious and you'll never get them back. So take advantage of opportunities and stay away from those things that are gonna get you in a lot of trouble. Speaking of drugs, that's one of the other ways that you can, you will lose your privilege of being at a Owensboro High School. If you choose to come to school high, if you choose to bring drugs here, you will not be here. The police will be involved. I just wanna make sure we're clear on that. If you choose to bring drugs to Owensboro High School, if you choose to come to school high, you will not be here. When you go to the doctor and you get a prescription medication, an antibiotic, you've had a sinus infection, uh, whatever it may be, and you need to take that medicine while you're at school, then there's a procedure that you must follow. Your parent needs to bring that prescription drug into the school and see the school nurse. She will keep that medication for you. We are, you are not allowed to have any prescription drugs on your person during the school day. Again, if you need to take a prescription drug, we can help you do that, but we'll do that through the nurse's office. We spent quite a bit of time talking about dress standards, and we've used some examples for you to be able to see exactly what we're talking about on what is appropriate and inappropriate dress at Owensboro High School. This year we thought we'd try something a little bit different and we actually decided to try this because uh, our students suggested that we, that we do it. There's always some confusion, there seems to be confusion about dress code. So we thought we'd have some students model what was appropriate and what was inappropriate um, for school wear. Now sometimes during this video, I may say this is inappropriate for school wear. That doesn't mean that the dress is inappropriate. It just means that you can't wear it to school. You can wear it to practice, you can wear it to ball games, you can wear it to other things, but not to school while we're having class. I have Will Van Wick with him here with me here today, and he is dressed appropriate for school. He's got on a, a Owensboro High School t-shirt, he's got on khaki shorts, he looks great. This is an appropriate dress for school at Owensboro High School. At this time, we have Trenton Cundiff with us, and Trenton is dressed inappropriate, inappropriately for school. We'll start at the head and work our way down. Trenton has on a cap, which is perfectly fine to wear a cap, but not at school. So, um, you know, we don't need to wear our caps once we get inside the building. Um, he also has some beads on here, some nice pretty beads, but this one has alcohol on it, so these are inappropriate for school wear. So anything with alcohol, drugs, um, cigarettes, any of those kind of uh, things uh, are inappropriate for school. He also has on a tank top, which is inappropriate for school, and he's sagging. As you can see, you can see the top of his underwear, and that is very inappropriate for school. Um, so you can see from head to ankles, uh, Trenton is not dressed appropriately for school. Again, if he wants to wear this to the ball game, to practice, to uh, the movies, it's perfectly fine, but not dress for Owensboro High School. Thank you, Trenton. We have Christian Woods with us here today, and I appreciate you coming because I know you just got off the football field, Christian. But he's modeling for us some attire that's inappropriate for school. Again, let's start at the, start at the head. He has on his cap, uh, which is probably in Owensboro High School. No, it's a Cincinnati cap. But anyway, he has his cap on, and it's fine to wear a cap to practice to a ball game, maybe even to a movie, but not at Owensboro High School. That's not appropriate for school dress. He has on an Owensboro High School t-shirt, which is fine, but he's also wearing some beads, and it looks like he's seen Trenton. He's got some, 
beads with uh, alcohol on those, which is very inappropriate for school. Anything, again, with alcohol, drugs, cigarettes, any of those kinds of things on them is not appropriate for school wear. He's also sagging. Uh, we can see some shorts under the shorts, and uh, that is not appropriate for school. So um, his shoes and socks are fine, but some of the things that, that Christian has on would not work for school, and that means we would have to say, say something to him about his dress. But I really appreciate you coming over today. Thank you. We also have Logan Blue here with us today. Uh, Logan is just come off the football field as well. I really appreciate you coming over today. Look like you've grown this summer. Um, Logan is dressed very appropriately for school. He's got on jeans and t-shirts. Uh, he looks very nice and this is what we like to see kids wear to school each and every day. Uh, he and Tiana both came in and they have exactly what we would like to see on our young ladies and young men when they come to school for classes at Owensboro High School. Thank you. Now we're going to look at some girls in their dress. Um, there are certain things that, again, are fine to wear to the movies. They're fine to wear to practice. They're fine to wear to ball games, but they're not appropriate for school. So right now I have Kate Sook here with me, and Kate agreed to do this video with us, and she has on leggings, jeggings, jogging pants, whatever we're going to call these. And again, she looks very sweet. She's very cute, but this is not appropriate for school. Now, if Kate wanted to wear these to school, it would be fine if she had a skirt or a jumper down to her knees. So that's one of the things that we've had some issues with in the past, and we just want to kind of clear up that confusion, that these are inappropriate for school unless we're going to wear something over them that comes down to the knee. Thanks, Kate. This is Claire Ottman, and Claire agreed to help us with our dress code video today as well. And Claire has on a pair of shorts. What do we call these, Claire? Running shorts. Running shorts. Yep. And they, as you can see, she looks very cute, very sweet. But these are inappropriate for school simply because they're too short. So we had a lot of girls wearing them last spring. Uh, I actually have a couple pair of myself I wear to jog in. But they're inappropriate for school. Um, so thank you very much, Claire. I have Tiana Greer here with me uh, today. And Tiana is dressed in an Owensboro High School t-shirt and blue jeans. And as you can see, she looks perfectly fine. And this is perfectly suitable dress for school at Owensboro High School. And as a matter of fact, most days, that's what most students wear is just jeans and t-shirts. So thank you so much, Tiana, for coming today. We also have Kelsey Reese with us here today to help us model. Um, and actually what Kelsey's modeling today is inappropriate dress for school. She has on, I think, what we call jeggings. And these are inappropriate to wear to school unless you're going to wear a skirt or a jumper or something over, over them down to the knee. Um, so Kelsey's a very pretty young lady and she can wear this to the movies, maybe to drama practice after school or um, you know, to the ball games, but it would be inappropriate dress for school. Thank you. We also have Bree Greer here with us today to help us with our video uh, for dress code. And uh, Bree came in to help us. She actually uh, came in from work, so we appreciate you coming. Um, but now Bree is dressed inappropriately because her shorts are too short for school at Owensboro High School. Now it's perfectly fine for Bree to wear these to her uh, babysitting job maybe to a drama rehearsal after school, to the movies, maybe even to a ball game this fall, but it's inappropriate dress for school at Owensboro High School. Thank you, Bree. Attendance and tardies become an issue for high school students. Um, I know all of you have cell phones, and I know almost all cell phones have alarms. Please set them. Please get to bed on time so you can get up in time to be to school. And it's imperative that you're here. If you're not in school, if you come in late and miss first block or part of first block, you're missing class. And any time you miss class, you're going to hurt your grades. You have to be here. It's that simple. If you look at the kids that's not graduated in the last few years, it all ties back to attendance. They're not in class so they fail their classes. If those students had chosen to come to class, they would have passed. So it's imperative that you're here every day. 
And again, if you're coming in late every day, you're missing class time. So it's imperative that you're here and you're here on time. When you have excused absences, those means that um, you can have a few that your parent can write a note and then you'll get into doctor's statements, which means you have to have a doctor's note. If you get past that point, then you're in danger because then you're into unexcused absences. And if it's unexcused, you do not get full credit for your work, even if you choose to do it. You'll only get 50% credit. And that will add up very quickly with those grades that we were just talking about. So your teachers will help you with makeup work. They'll provide copies for you. They'll let you know what is available and what you need to get done and when. But if it's unexcused, they don't have a choice. It's 50% credit. So make sure that you're here every day, here on time. And if you absolutely must miss, make sure you've gone to the doctor and you have a doctor's note. For seniors and for seniors only, we have college visits, and you are allotted two days to take college visits throughout your senior year. We approved through the office. Uh, actually, I'm the one that approves most of those, so you'll need to see Ms. Boone to get the appropriate form if you're a senior, and um, then that form will actually come to my desk. Again, all of us just do better if we know what's expected of us, and again, I will tell you, we have very high expectations for our students at Owensboro High School. And as I said at the beginning of our video, the students at Owensboro High School are the best. And um, you know, I'm going to carry that with me. But if you don't know what the rules are, ask. Simply ask a teacher, ask, ask a principal or guidance counselor. We're here to help you. But if you're going to break rules, then there will be consequences. And I hope that they are the kind of consequences that I call a bump in the road. Because if you choose to do some of those other things that we talked about in the video, then you won't be here. And then we'll all miss out. So here are the expectations. We expect you to live up to them. And I know that you will. Thank you.